Hello, thank you for joining me today. We're reading through A Course in Miracles, The Daily Lessons, and today we're on Workbook Lesson 200, which means I'm a little excited. I haven't looked at the index, but I, I, I think that we might be getting to move into a review period. I, I know you know those are my favorite because the readings are so much shorter. Um, but so today, Workbook Lesson 200, can you believe it? We're 200. We're at 200 today. We've been doing this for over 200 days because even though I've tried to do one every day, there have been some days that have been missed. So um, here we go. Workbook lesson 200. There is no peace except the peace of God. There is no peace except the peace of God. Seek you no further. You will not find peace except the peace of God. Accept this fact and save yourself the agony of yet more bitter disappointments, bleak despair, and sense of icy hopelessness and doubt. Seek you no further. There is nothing else for you to find except the peace of God, unless you seek for misery and pain. This is the final point to which one must come at last, to lay aside all hope of finding happiness where there is none, of being saved but what by what can only hurt, of making peace of chaos, joy of pain, and heaven out of hell. Attempt no more to win through losing, nor die to live. You cannot but be asking for defeat. Yet you can ask as easily for love, for happiness, for eternal life in peace that has no ending. Ask for this, and you can only win to ask for what you have already to ask for what you have already must succeed to ask that what is false be true can only fail forgive yourself for vain imaginings and seek no longer what you cannot find for what could be more foolish than to seek and seek and seek again for hell when you have but to look with open eyes to find that heaven lies before you through a door that opens easily to welcome you. Come home. You have not found your happiness in foreign places and in alien forms that have no meaning to you, though you sought to make them meaningful. This world is not where you belong. You are a stranger here, but it is given you to find the means whereby the world no longer seems to be a prison or a jail for anyone. Freedom is given you where you be held but chains and iron doors, but you must change your mind about the purpose of the world if you would find escape. You will be bound till the world, till all the world is seen by you as blessed and everyone made free of your mistakes and honored as he is. You made him not, no more yourself, and as you free the one, the other is accepted as he is. What does forgiveness do? In truth, it has no function and does nothing, for it is unknown in heaven. It is only hell where it is needed and where it must serve a mighty function. Is not the escape of God's beloved son from evil dreams that he imagines, yet believes are true, a worthy purpose? Who could hope for more while there appears to be a choice to make between success and failure, love and fear? There is no peace except the peace of God, because he has one son who cannot make a world in opposition to God's will and to his own, which is the same as his. What could he hope to find in such a world? It cannot have reality because it was never created. It is here, is it here that he would seek for peace? Or must he see that as he looks on it, the world can but deceive? Yet can he learn to look at it another way and find the peace of God? I want to just pause here for a second 
because there was one sentence here that is really, really powerful, and I want us to sink in with it for a moment. It's really three sentences, the third of which is the one that caught me. What does forgiveness do? In truth, it has no function and does nothing. This is the line. For it is unknown in heaven. Let's just sit with that for a minute. What that means is that this, the concept that you could do anything wrong that would require forgiveness doesn't exist in heaven. We are divinity in form. It doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes, but that fundamentally there is no need for forgiveness because we are God beings being. And the only thing that exists is love. So we're going to love ourselves no matter what happens. Which is why forgiveness is unknown in heaven. It, it reminds me uh, of uh, Richard Bach's story. Uh, I forget the title of the story, but the line was... Love means never having to say you're sorry, which many people have twisted and, and turned into something that means that they can do stuff and they can not apologize. And that isn't what it meant at all. That isn't what it meant at all. It's this concept here that that phrase meant. There, there is no need for forgiveness because there isn't anything but divinity. That's what it meant. That's what it meant. So reading on, peace is the bridge that everyone will cross to leave this world behind. But peace begins within the world perceived as different and leading from this fresh perception, perception to the gate of heaven and the way beyond. Peace is the answer to conflicting goals, to senseless journeys, frantic, vain pursuits, and meaningless endeavors. Now the way is easy, sloping gently towards the bridge where freedom lies within the peace of God. Let us not lose our way again today. We go to heaven and the path is straight. Only if we attempt to wander can there be the delay and needless wasted time on thorny byways. God alone is sure, and he will guide our footsteps. He will not desert his children in need, nor let him stray forever from his home. The father calls, the child will hear. And that is all there is to what appears to be a world apart from God, where bodies have reality. Now there is silence. Seek no further. You have come to where the road is carpeted with the leaves of false desires, fallen from the trees of hopelessness you sought before. Now they are underfoot, and you look up and on toward heaven with the body's eyes but serving for an instant longer now. Peace is already recognized at last, and you can feel its soft embrace surround your heart and mind with comfort and love. Today we seek no idols. Peace cannot be found in them. The peace of God is ours, and only this will we accept and want. Peace to be us today. For we have found a simple, happy way to leave the world of ambiguity and to reduce our shifting goals and solitary dreams with a single purpose and companionship. For peace is union, if it be of God. We seek no further. We are close to home and draw still nearer every time we say, there is no peace except the peace of God. And I am great, glad and thankful it is so. Let me read that again. There is no peace except the peace of God. And I am glad and thankful it is so. 
So I hope you have a great day with this lesson. We're really hammering these points home and it feels really good. I hope that uh, it feels good for you as well. If you need support, you can reach me at 907-351-3003, talk or text. And uh, you can also message me on Facebook or on YouTube. And I'll look forward to seeing you here tomorrow for the next daily lesson. Namaste and much love.